Good morning, sir. Today's my tech talk topic is on basics of clock and data recovery circuits. Actually, what is basic of clock and data recovery circuits? Let us look about that. What is clock and data recovery circuits? In practically, we can say that a phase lock loop aligns to the incoming data transition and a proper clock signal can be extracted. Like uh, we have seen many perspectives of this clock and data recovery circuits in our past laboratory and our class in our pre previous classes also. And this is the main uh, motto of this clock and data recovery circuits, which we can know to how we can phase the clock loop uh, assigned to incoming data transition and a proper clock signal can be extracted. And uh, uh, in this, the retriever clock is also used to uh, retime the incoming data. As uh, we have, uh, if you have uh, any retired clock, uh, it can be used to retime the incoming data. And this process is called the clock and data recovery, which we can say it as uh, CDR in shortcut form. Uh, and uh, uh, in this timing uh, feature is called uh, clock data recovery. We can call it as an uh, CDR also. And this recovery uh, and this re receive, uh, receiver generates a clock from an approximate frequency reference and then phase aligns the clock to the transition in the data stream with a phase local loop, uh, which is known as PLL, uh, nothing but phase local loop. Here we have uh, some re generation to the clock from an approximate frequency reference. And uh, this receiver uh, will generate the clock of uh, frequency reference and the phase uh, aligns uh, the clock to the transition in the data stream with a, some extent of phase logger loop. And in this one method of uh, performing a process commonly known as clock and data recovery, uh, as uh, you have seen the past slide. And uh, this is the main uh, synopsis uh, and uh, significant of this uh, CDR and uh, clock and clock uh, and data recovery of this topic. And uh, here we have a basic concept of this uh, clock recovery data. And mm -hmm. it is uh, serial data is normally sent as a series of uh, pulses with a well defined timing constraints like. Uh, if you send any serial data normally to an uh, series in the series pulse, it will be well defined in the time management consistent. And this presents a problem for the receiving side. And uh, if their own uh, local clock is not uh, precisely uh, like uh, with the transmitter, or uh, they may sample the signal at the wrong time and uh, thereby decode, it will decode the signal in incorrectly. And uh, we have many addressed uh, with extremely accurate and uh, stable clocks, like atomic clocks, but these are expensive and complex more uh, compared to this other uh, basic concept of the other than the clock and uh, discovery data. Here we have men uh, significant on this uh, basic content of uh, this atomic clocks and uh, and this clock uh, addressed data. Here we have a uh, own local clock is uh, like a not, it's not uh, precisely seen, it's not uh, precisely with the transmi transmitter and they have sampled the signal in the wrong time and thereby decode the signal incorrectly as we have said fastly. And this can be addressed with the extremely current and stable clocks like atomic uh, clocks and these are ex very expensive and complex too. And it has serial data is normally uh, sent to a series of pulses with well-defined timing constraints like uh, and as uh, local clocks and uh, transmitters and like sampling signal at the wrong time and thereby decodes the signal incorrectly. Mm -hmm. And it addresses the sum of the current time stable clocks, like atomic clocks. But these are expensive and complex in the 
basic concept of this clock uh, due recovery data and uh, it is more common low cost of uh, like uh, it's too uh, cost is too low clock systems it has uh, like uh, quite short letters uh, and uh, are accurate enough for this task over short periods of time and but over a period of uh, minutes or hours the drift is this uh, like uh, the systems will make uh, timing too uh, inaccurate for most uh, uh, for more tasks in the further and uh, here clock recovery addresses this problem by embedding uh, clock information into the data stream allowing the transmitters clock timing to be determined and more commonly, it has uh, low cost clock systems like uh, quartz oscillators are accurate enough for this task over a short period of time, but over a period of minutes or hours, the drift in the system will make timing too inaccurate for most tasks. Clock recovery addresses this problem by embedding or uh, clock information into the data stream allowing the transmitters clock timing to be determined and uh, it has some theoretically uh, clock systems as uh, it's more common quartz oscillators be, can be used in this clock system and it's uh, very accurate uh, enough for this task and over short period of time but uh, over a period of minutes or uh, hours the drift in these systems will make timings too inaccurate for most tasks 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 and here uh, clock recovery addresses this problem by embedding clock information into the data stream allowing this transmitters clock timing to be determined and in this, this is uh, normally takes the, it takes normal uh, like a uh, form of short signals uh, and uh, we can insert it into the data that can be easily seen and then use it in a phase local loop, PLL or a similar adjustable oscillator to produce a local clock signal that can be used to time the signal in the periods like uh, between the clock signals and between the clock uh, discovery data and in another way also and here the main advantage of this approach is that a small drift in the transmitters clock can be compensated as the receiver will always match it within the limits like we have uh, uh, common matches and uh, we can uh, manage this compensation compensated receiver in a within the limit of this uh, approach of the small drift in the transmitter clocks and uh, here we can adjust like uh, it's adjustable oscillator to produce a local clock signal that can be used in time and uh, signal like uh, it can be like uh, it can be adjusted in the periods between the clock signals and uh, we can insert or insert, we can easily insert into the data that can be easily seen and that uh, it is used in the phase local loop like a PLL and uh, we can adjust the oscillator to produce a local clock signal and that can be used to time the signal in the periods between the clock signals and uh, here coming to importance of this, the function of a CDR is relatively simple ones and the architectures possible for the it are accordingly just a few and simple ones like uh, actual just there can be actually just there and it is uh, nonetheless uh, important to have a good knowledge of the of those architectures and a good understanding of these uh, like uh, of the mathematical descriptions because these models are the best tools uh, for the engineers that must deal with CDRs and uh, others too. And um, starting from the definition, as if we start from the definition, 
and it's uh, specific specification of uh, all CDRs and all the way through all the different synchronous tasks that logically follow. And uh, it can be, these models can be an invaluable uh, reference for the engineering and it, it will it will be needed then to imagine or uh, specify design or check whether the CDRs are working or not. And it can be measured and interrupt the behavior of a CDR. And yeah, I have given the uh, like a PPL output of this uh, reference signal and the CDR fundamental structure. This is the CDR fundamental structure. Here, uh, unity feedback, first order or second order, type one or type two loop. Here, it can be here uh, we can see properly the input error and uh, output of the PPL and the called clock, record data, and record uh, reference signal in this PPT in this slide. Here we have a uh, input and output of this uh, fundamental structure of CDR. And the CDR is always designed with the architecture of PPL and where the series fuel pulses are will be sampled with the local clock. And um, the input of this circuit is the phase of a reference signal and the output is the phase of a signal. And the output is located as much as the circuit can be to the input signal. And um, coming to applications of the CDR, here, the clock and data recovery circuits is necessary to extract the data transmitted to the transmitter from the corrupted receiver signal. And here, also, the to, it, uh, like, uh, to record the economy clock timing information at the uh, receiver side of the communication types, systems, and uh, applications, and optication of uh, clock and data recovery circuits, CDR is connected to the optical transfer transformer and the end of the fabric channel linked to extract timing information from a serial data stream to all of the receiving circuit to record the transmitted data. And thank you. Thank you.